Hey, y'all, welcome back to the Late Night Vision Show. This is episode number 211. My name is Jason. I'm the owner of Outdoor Legacy, specializing in all things night vision and thermal optics. And as always, I've got my co-host, Hans. What is going on with you tonight, sir? Man, I'm going to say thank y'all for watching our past episode, episode 210, which was what was in our gear bag. And we've got a lot of great response, a lot of, a lot of funny comments, uh, a lot of people uh, laughing at Jason's purse, uh, his man purse, uh, yeah, hunt, and, hunting and, tactical and, side sling bag, and the half-rolled yeah. used toilet paper. Yeah, yeah, Hans, uh, his his half used toilet paper that uh, he had in his bag. I, I tell you, folks, that was a show that um, we honestly <laughs> going into it had zero idea there was going to be anything funny about it. Right. It turned into Hans uh, literally had, had somebody send us a screenshot of him biting his lip, trying to <laughs> not say something else smart, making fun of me. Uh, yeah. There's been some some screenshots of me red faced giggling over here about oh, it. So it was, yeah. we, we had a good time with the show. So go, go check that out. If you're looking for some, uh, some uh, second grade humor over second there, grade <laughs> it was exactly. unexpected. Well, we are back to business this week. Episode two eleven is all about the brand new, somewhat brand new. Uh, we'll get into that somewhat brand new, the AGM varmints. We're going to be looking at two of them. So we are actually combining a review, which we don't do that many that often. Uh, but we wanted to get these reviews out to you. Uh, we've had them for a while. We've had some testing. We've been doing some testing, but we're doing and reviewing the AGM Varmint, the TS35640, and the Varmint TS50640. Y'all, the, the specs on these things are so close. It was like, why do we not just combine these review? Uh, and you get a chance to see some video uh, while we're doing it. So I'll be rolling some video that I took with the, the TS35 and give you a good idea of what it looks like. Uh, before we get to it, a lot of people out there are like, well, these things have been out for a while. Why are you just now talking uh, talking about them? We got calls from people that said, hey, notice you haven't mentioned anything about the varmints or, you know, I don't see them listed for sale on the website. Two things real quick and easy. Uh, the reason why you haven't heard us talking about them yet is two reasons. <laughs> it is that the fact that the uh, when you were doing the laser range finder on the screen, it was reading in meters and not yards. So we wanted to make sure that that was corrected before we really discussed it. So whenever you would range a target, it wouldn't be in yards, it would be in meters. That has been since been corrected. Also, there were a couple small minor things that were um, acting real funny with the laser range finder. AGM was uh, really good about getting on top of it, getting it taken care of and fixed. So we wanted to wait until we got the the, the final unit that we felt was uh, was re ready and good to go. No laser range finder issues. You know, meters is now saying yards, but it is ready to go. We've had it for a while. Like I said, it's just d now didn't get taken care of, uh, but we wanted to test it after this, uh, the corrections were made. Anyway, with all that being said, I'm going to jump into the specs unless Jason, you have anything to add? I do there. have something. <laughs> I want to go over these models real quick. Oh, so that's right. Okay. It, yeah, I want to I want to go over the, just the, the other models. Uh, I want to mention something too. Um, these are now for sale at OutdoorLegacyGear.com. So if you're looking for any kind of night vision or thermal, uh, including the Varmint laser range finders, uh, you can jump over to OutdoorLegacyGear.com. You can give Hans and I a call at eight seven seven three five zero one eight one eight. That is what we do for a living is uh, use, review, and sell uh, thermal and night vision optics. And we are absolutely glad to give you uh, personal recommendations. You can call us, tell us what you're doing, uh, where you're hunting, you know, what you're hunting, how far you're shooting, all these things. We can ask you uh, uh, just a simple list of questions, hear a little more about what you do, and recommend exactly which one of these or any other scopes is right for you. So I want to mention uh, the, the the four models of these real quick uh, so that you know what they are. Uh, there's uh, two 384 by 288 standard resolution uh, models. One is a three power base magnification and it's $3,295. There is a four power 384 resolution uh, varmint and it's 3795 
So you got a three power for basically 3,300. You got a four power for basically 3,800. Then when you move to the 640s, now this is what we're going to be reviewing today. We will uh, get to these 384 units soon, uh, but we're going to group these two together. The 640s, uh, there's going to be a two power, and that is 4,995. Mm -hmm. And there's a two and a half power, and that is going to be 54. 95 so 500 dollars more and again the only difference is one is two power one is two and a half power uh, otherwise all of these units all four of these um take them put them in a bag shake them up pull them out you can't tell the difference in the 640s the 384s the only thing difference is the higher magnification units have a uh, a larger objective lens but that's it. We'll talk a little bit more about that. But anyway, those are the four models that are available. Again, we'll be focusing on the 640s today with reviews of the 384 to come soon. Yeah. So with that being said, uh, let's get to the specifications. Now, Jason, you are not going to like the order that these are in. Um, oh, but I don't like it already. I can but tell. when you asked me to do the specs... You, you called me up and said, hey, why don't you do the specs? You, I usually do them. Why don't you do them? So you get my order. Uh, so when you so basically what this means, this will be the last time that Hans does yeah. the specs. Enjoy it's, it, folks. It, it's <laughs> like um, when your parents were, uh, yet when you were younger, not that I did this, but uh, mm -hmm. they ask you to mow the yard. So you mow it just as terrible as you possibly can. Oh, so they never gosh. ask you to do it again. That's kind of <laughs> what this is about. So uh, what I'm going to go over first is the common specs. These are the specifications that are the same for both models, the, both the, the 35 and the 50, 640. So here we go. Common specs. They uh, both have four different color palettes, black, hot, white, hot, red, hot fusion, five different reticles, four different uh, color options for the reticle. It does have picture in picture mode. It uh, It's a 12 micron, 50 hertz refresh rate, 640 resolution by 512. So it's a little bit different. A lot of times you hear scopes being 640 by, uh, by 480. This is actually uh, 640 by 512. It just means that the, the screen or the, the, the image that comes off over that you see is going to be a little bit more square. It's a, uh, it's got a, a, a 1.0 f-stop or aperture, and if you're in the camera, in the cameras, you'd call it f-stop, but uh, the aperture is a, a 1.0. Uh, the laser rangefinder, they say, is accurate out to about 600 yards. It's an eight times digital zoom. It has an OLED display, and it's a 1020 by 768 OLED display, 16 gigs of built-in memory for video recording with onboard uh, video recording, it does not record audio, but it does record video. Uh, it does have uh, Wi-Fi, so you can turn the Wi-Fi on and link it up to an app. Uh, it runs on one 18650 rechargeable uh, lithium battery. It's one of the great things we're going to be talking about later on in the show, but you can buy those 18650 batteries in anywhere. I uh, have a pocket full of them. They're 10 to $15 a piece, really, and that's it's a great deal. Uh, the battery runtime, uh, Jason, before the show, was kind enough to do the bench test on the battery, and he got close to three and a half hours out of it. Uh, AGM on their spec sheet said four and a half hours. Did, we definitely didn't get that much, but we did our bench test like we normally do. Uh, whatever the temperature of Jason's house is, uh, then that's what the battery was running at. Probably <laughs> 80 because he's pretty cheap, doesn't like to run air yeah. <laughs> 79. Whatever. 79, exactly. You can also run this off of an external battery pack with a USB-C cord that is provided. So uh, any external battery pack that people that use, you know, to charge their cell phones with on the go, uh, if you want to do that, you can. But again, you're using 18650, you can have a pocket full of them. So uh, that may not be necessary. The operating temperature. Minus four degrees Fahrenheit up to 131 degrees Fahrenheit. So negative four to 131. Uh, the weight, uh, both of these are a little bit under a pound and a half. And they are IP67 uh, waterproof rating. So anybody out there that feels like they might want to go take this for a swim, I would uh, <laughs> I would not do it. But don't worry about it. Get it rained on. You'll be fine. Now, the different specs. These are the differences. There's not much, y'all. Uh, but there's some key differences. So the price on the TS35, uh, like Jason said, $49.95, so almost $5,000. The magnification on the 35, it is a 2 to 16 power uh, magnification. It's an 8 times digital zoom. The objective lens on it, uh, 35 millimeters. 
the detection range uh, they say is 1,913 yards. Could very well be. Uh, that really is not a huge concern. The huge concern and what everybody wants to know about is the uh, what the ID range is, not necessarily the detection range, but the ID range conservatively, I would say, uh, is going to be around 400 yards. Uh, and we'll go over the detection range on the 50 just a minute. But 400 yards conservatively might be a b little bit more, uh, might be a little bit less in, in humid or rainy conditions. Uh, it, it would be less than that. In the field of view, uh, 66 feet at 100 yards. Uh, the TS50 640, so the difference between this and the 35. Uh, the price on that, like Jason said, uh, exactly $500 more expensive, $5,495. This is a 2.5 to 20 power scope. So the other one was 2 to 16. This is 2.5 to 20. Uh, 8 times digital zoom, 50 millimeter objective lens, a detection range of 2,500 yards. I would say the ID range, Jason, on this one, I would say you're going to get about 50 to 100 yards more ID range out of this. You may think differently, but well, uh, I'd I say about you're 50. Gonna, you're it's, you're going to get a little more for sure. A little bit more. And again, could be more or less depending on conditions. And uh, one of the big differences, field of view. I know that this is only a half a power difference in the base magnification, but the field of view... Uh, at 100 yards on the TS-50 is 46 feet. So it's 20 feet more narrow at 100 yards field of view than the TS-35. But those are the specs, the common specs, and the different specs. That was a lot to get okay. through. Okay, so I want to just roll into something here talking about what you're you're mentioning here. And I want to talk about field of view and magnification. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a you're making a good point there. You're dropping 20 feet, which is basically 30% of your field of view by going up a half a power. Mm -hmm. That proves a point that I was already sitting here scratching some notes I wanted to make. There's a misconception that daytime hunters have that are moving into the night hunting world that haven't used these type of thermal optics and, and night vision optics, especially at night, is that a half a power or a single power jump is not much. And it's actually a lot. Mm -hmm. And we see it in these optics just like this, going up a half a power, and we're cutting out uh, almost 30% of the field of view. Uh, that means something else. It means we're getting a lot more magnification. Mm -hmm. And two and two and a half doesn't seem like much, but it's significant. Right. And where it is really gets significant is, is this. And I tell people this on the phone all the time. And I know they think I'm probably, you know, talking down to them, asking them to do, you know, first grade math. But it, it's worth noting that a two power, when you, you know, you zoom this up one time, you're still going to have a good usable image quality because it's a 640 optic. You mm -hmm. go to four power, a two and a half power, you go to five power. Right. Well, the difference in two and two and a half, okay, maybe that's not a lot, but the difference in four and five is a lot. It's a whole power more. And then if you take it that next step, which is probably as far as you're going to want to zoom up, you're going to go to eight power versus 10 power. Now you've got two whole steps of magnification. So I guess the point I'm making is don't take these half a steps uh, or sometimes some scopes, it's it's one step, you know, two to three power. People go, ah, that's mm -hmm. not much. Why is that really $500 more? Well, it's significant. It, it makes a difference. Doesn't yeah. mean you need it. I mean, it may be a negative for you, but it might be a positive. So anyway, I just want to throw that out that there is a difference. Here, here's also uh, what a lot of people think, and I, and I get the comment quite a bit. Oh, well, the TS-50 has a a larger objective lens. Yeah. So it's going to be a wider field of view. And I get that oh. a lot. And, and yeah. in digital optics, uh, you know, that's not the case. It's going to be your, that's exactly your, right. your magnification level. Uh, and you know, the it, higher the mag, if you go for higher magnification, mm -hmm. you are giving up field of view. So that's why. Again, and we, yeah. I, yeah, I know. No, hundred no, percent. And, and going down that we're on a little bit of a rabbit trail, but, but on that same, that same comment, is the misconception that daytime hunters have of, oh, I want that 50 millimeter because that's going to be better than the 35. Mm -hmm. And I'm here to tell you that the difference in the image quality in the 35 and the 50, it is, it's not there. 
Right. It, I, it is not yeah. there. Yeah. I can hand you one of these and hand you the other, and you can look through them, and there's no difference. Now, one, the animal looks closer or the objects look closer, but right. the image quality is the same. Exactly. Um, I do believe uh, if we took all things being equal, and one of them had a 35 millimeter and one of them had a 75 millimeter, mm. we might begin to see something. We know we've got mm. so much oh, germanium yeah. and so much glass on the end. We might see a difference in image quality. But anyway, I, mm. that's, that's a rabbit trail. So I want to do the walk around of this. Um, again, this is what Hans normally does. So uh, <laughs> I'm going to try to do it and, and see if I can't you know, butcher it. He actually did better on those specs than I thought. We might invite him back to do that <laughs> one more time. I don't know, but I, I, I'm, I'm, I would gladly give up that, that part of the segment of the show. Well, I, <laughs> I, I normally, uh, call him Vanna White. So that yeah. means that I'm going to be, uh, you know, Pat Sajak. So here we go. Um, all right. This is the unit itself right here. I'm going to, let me try to move my microphone a little bit here and get out of the way. Um, so you can see this. Uh, it is a nice compact unit. I'm going to put my hand here. You can kind of just see me holding it. It is not that big at all. So starting on this side, the only thing we've got a significant over here is a little rubber dust uh, cover. That is where a USB cable will go. You can plug into that and you're able to uh, connect to your computer download your videos you are also able to uh, plug in a external usb battery pack if you really needed that in cold weather or if you know you ran out of you know battery power out in the field uh, right here we obviously have the rubber eye cup this is removable it just peels right off uh, you can put it back on I said that I might be wrong I thought that it came <laughs> off it may not come off I I don't know. I think it does. I'm not, I'm not going to peel on it, but I'm pretty sure that it does. Uh, um, and honestly, I never the, even try. I, most of the time I, I didn't try either. I, I hunt with it on there, so I was yeah. pretty sure it came off, but it, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Um, right here, we've got the diopter, which is your focus for your display screen. That just, uh, this confuses people. They'll focus this and they think they're focusing the scope. They're not. They're focusing the eyepiece so that everything is in focus on the display screen just for your eye that could be different for my eye your eye if you wear glasses what have you um, so I'm gonna go ahead and move forward and we'll turn it around uh, right here this is the uh, battery compartment again as Han said 18650 battery uh, there's a little little tether I'm trying to get this where you can see it. a little tether right there that holds that so you don't lose your battery you just unscrew this uh, you know so you don't lose that cap there you go there is the battery in there uh, I'm gonna now screw this all back on here so it doesn't flop <laughs> around I'm not very good at this this oh is I'm, I'm learning here all right this is, butchering. this is your laser range finder this is a little different a lot of the scopes we see it is on the side and to be honest it's usually bigger than this this is not that big I actually like that um, so turning it around and obviously in the front we have a plastic rigid um, lens cap I'm going to talk a little bit more about that later this is our focus ring this focuses the objective lens this ring right here and uh, on the bottom you can see our American defense mount uh, we'll be talking about that as well but now here's the controls really like the controls super easy red button that is your power button so you you press that obviously to turn it on but what's really cool is that that is also uh, your uh, display off or standby button if, if you just touch that one time while the scope is on instantly the display screen turns off uh, save some battery power you don't have that light shining back on you maybe if you're walking around or sitting on a tripod instantly you know press the button it's right back on mm -hmm. this unit uh, this unit this button right here this is your laser range finding button you press that button one time it sends the laser out it gives you the reading on the screen. If you press and hold that button, it starts and stops video recording. So you can record video with that same button. Back here, I don't know if you can see this, uh, this is actually a wheel and a button. And so this wheel right here, very unique. I haven't seen this on a thermal scope that I can think of. There may be something older, but nothing modern I can think of that, that would have had to this. Uh, this is your zoom. So you just scroll this up uh, and boom, it zooms you up, go back, 
zooms it down. Really cool. No button press. It is really quick and easy to zoom that up. Um, it's also easy to bump that because it's really easy to turn. So sometimes I'll, I'll hit it, not know it, and go, whoa, I'm way zoomed up. But I like it because it's so easy to take it right back down. That's a pretty cool feature. And then right here, this is a button as well. And that does two things. A short press changes your color palettes uh, from, you know, white hot, black hot, um, you know, red hot, rainbow, whatever they all are. But then you can press and hold it and it gets you into your uh, menu. And then you use the scroll wheel here uh, mm -hmm. to go through the menu. So uh, that's a basic walk around. I want to mention this unit has the American Defense Manufacturing American Made Lifetime Guarantee uh, mount on it. Uh, all of the AGM optics have American Defense mounts. If you listen to the show much, you know that we are uh, huge fans of American Defense, good friends with them here mm -hmm. on the show and at Outdoor Legacy. Uh, if you ever see uh, the Varmint or any other uh, AGM scope, sometimes you'll see one that has a, a mount that's about that much longer, and it's got one more QD throw lever. Mm -hmm. uh, I really don't know why sometimes they'll have those uh, longer mounts. Sometimes they'll have these. Generally, they have these shorter mounts. Uh, mm -hmm. Just so you know, there's really no difference. Right. We have had AGM, AGM, ADM, American mm -hmm. Defense. Mm -hmm. We've had them, uh, Mr. Tom Stewart, on the show for an interview a few weeks ago. Uh, I point blank asked him about these optics, not just not just the, the AGM, but their mm -hmm. other uh, mounts. Some have two QD throw levers, some have one. There is absolutely no difference in the return to zero mm -hmm. ability or the ability for the mount to hold zero. Mm -hmm. So the, the two latches on there, the longer mount, there's some guys that go, I got to have that because it's going to, you know, give me better hold zero. ADM is like, it does nothing. Uh, it it yeah. does not help you. So I just don't want somebody to see that and think they have to have it. I mean, if, right. if, if you think you need it, you want it. Uh, I think it can be added on there. If you want one that's with a single, I'm sure it can be, kind of be swapped around. But just so you know on that. That's the basic walk around. Hans, yeah. what do you think of this scope? I know you've been yeah. using it a lot. Uh, guys, I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, Y'all know that we've had a ton of reviews to do. Um, we've been trying to get to these. Uh, we have had these uh, finalized units that, that after they change the yards and meters, on, we've had these things for a couple months and we've been using them. Hans has been wearing me out to do this review. <laughs> he loves this thing. He's I been do. hunting a ton with yeah. it. And he keeps going, hey, we're going to do the varmint. We're going to do I'm like, we're going to, we're going to. This is on our list. And yeah. so I had to shut him up. We had to get to these uh, because he's hunted a lot with them. I've used them a good bit. I've used the 384 more mm. than I've used the 640. Right. Um, I was using it really hard. And at the same time, when Hans was using the 640, and I, I have used these a good bit as well, I've used the the 64050 uh, a little more than the 35. So anyway, we've got experience with all of them. But but Hans, I know he likes these things. He's hunted with them a lot. So I'm going to kind of let him jump in here because he's yeah. been ants in his pants to do this review. I'm going to show the 35 real quick. You had the 50. This is 35, y'all. The only difference... 35 millimeter objective lens on it uh, physically, what you see looking at it is the difference. So everything else exactly the same. Um, yeah, you know, the uh, let's talk about AGM without getting too long winded. AGM Global Vision, uh, they are a very, very popular thermal optic company. They, uh, the success of the the Rattler 384 thermal scopes, the Taipans, uh, I mean, they really, I would say, in my own opinion, that those are the two optics that really put them on the map and, and how they got so popular in really a, a short amount of time. I, I, uh, obviously, yeah, oh, the, yeah. this industry sure. uh, has, you know, this industry and thermal products in, in general have exploded with popularity, uh, but they came on the scene relatively an unknown and, and grew to a major player in a short amount of time. So the Rattler 384, wildly popular, the Taipans, there was a lot of anticipation about the, the varmints. A, a lot of talk about the varmints before they even came out. A lot of people asking about them. Very excited about them coming out. I was one of those people uh, that was very excited about them coming out as well. And yeah, I would, when I got this, the the final one that we got, uh, I, I told you many times, so like, man, this 
this is a really good unit. This is a really good picture image. I don't want to get, we're going to be doing the cons and the pros and likes and dislikes here in a little bit. But my overall, what I want to talk about, my thoughts on it is people wanted to know, did this unit or is this unit going to live up to the hype? Because there was a lot of hype before it came out and when it was newly released. I think that uh, the the final production unit that we have that uh, we've tested, I do think that it has exceeded my expectations or at least matched my excitement uh, because it is. The picture quality on it is really, really good. I mean, the form factor, like Jason said, the design of it is really good, not very, not very large at all. I kept calling you and saying, man, the picture image on it's great. It, uh, you know, and a lot of people are going to ask, uh, about the picture image compared to some other things that we'll also talk about, but I was pleasantly surprised. Well, Hans, about let's, let's just real quick. I'm going to interrupt you real quick. Yeah. I, I, let's get that. And we won't even have to come back to it. Right. You know, the AGM already has the Rattler 640 optics. They came mm -hmm. out last sometime last fall, mm -hmm. um, last summer. I don't remember when sometime last year we reviewed those. Um, and, they're nice scopes. I think they're a very good value for the dollar. But I will tell you straight up, run these things side by side. The Varmint has a better image quality than the yes. Rattler 640. I mean, yes. and it costs more money, so I think that's fine. Uh, it should, but it mm -hmm. does. It has a sharper, crisper yep. image than the Rattler 640s do. And that's something that I was tickled with. So, I mean, just saying it right there, mm -hmm. uh, you know, talking about living up to the hype. I think it is. I mean, a yeah. better better image, uh, you're getting what you pay for. Plus, you're getting the LRF and the 18650s and everything else. So anyway, I interrupted you, but I just wanted to bring that up because, I, you know, I've had that question of, hey, you know, how is, is it just like a Rattler 640? Mm -hmm. And I'm mm -hmm. like, no, it's actually better. I mean, yeah. it, is a, it is a sharper, crisper uh, 640 image. I think it's got a better identification range. I think mm -hmm. it's, no, it's, it's a, it's a yeah, better so image than that. My, my thoughts on this scope before we break it down is it, it has exceeded my expectations. This is one of the least, if not the least expensive, uh, categorically, uh, least expensive, uh, laser range finder thermal scopes on the market. And I mean, yes. it, they, they have, uh, They've outperformed what I thought. Again, what I was, what I was, might have been concerned about yeah. what they might be, but yeah, they've done really well. So, so yeah, you, know, you just said that this is we're recording this in spring of 2022. We always give these these caveats and these dates. Mm -hmm. And I had a guy who said, "Why do y'all always say when it is?" And I said, "Because people surf onto these, and it could be." six months mm -hmm. or a year or two, or we have people watching, you know, the reviews that we did uh, three years ago, scopes that are discontinued, but some people watch it and we say something and they don't realize it's two years later and like, oh, well, things have changed. So yeah, yeah as of right now, these are the least expensive, uh, you know, 640 LRF, you know, laser rangefinder models mm -hmm. out there. Same mm -hmm. thing with the Rattler 384s, the 32 and 3800. I mean, these are going to be there, the least expensive laser rangefinders. So that's, it, it's really cool. We're getting more features um, and, and lowering the price. So, you know, we, we always like that. Uh, I, I tell you what I, I want to talk about just for a minute. And, and we harp on this. And if there's any other manufacturers watching this, um, this is for you too. <laughs> eighteen six fifty one eight six five zero. I'll say it again. Eighteen six fifty battery. This is a huge deal, folks. Mm -hmm. um, Hans mentioned it when he was running through the specs. He said this is a you know fifteen dollar battery. He's right. Um, another thing. Hey, kudos to AGM. They're sending this with two eighteen six fifty batteries and a charger. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I mean, two batteries and a charger, and we, we got three and a half hours of runtime on it. To me, that's saying something. I mean, yeah. they're sending this to you with six, seven hours of, of battery power. And 18650s, a lot of guys already have them laying around, flashlights, that sort of thing. If you don't, super cheap. Super, yeah. I mean, get a good quality. Yeah. That's my advice. If you're going to go buy one, um, the brand I really like is uh, Nightcore. They make a good battery. I'll tell you this. Um, we sell Sniper Hog Light IR mm -hmm. lights, and they make some really good 18650s as well. Yeah. Um, so anyway, get a good 18650. Going to last a long time. That's the kind of battery that mm -hmm. the consumer is really, 
looking for. Mm -hmm. An affordable, common battery you can get anywhere. It's not proprietary. It's rechargeable. It's not a CR123A. It's removable. I don't know. I just can't say enough about it. I understand um, that it it takes a certain size and style of optic. I'm holding this thing up here. I mean, you know, you got to have a place to put it. I get that. And and it makes it stick up. It makes it be a little taller. There's certain things required there. But anyway, I really am happy to see uh, that battery. I know that um, you know, we're seeing a few more optics, some handhelds from some different companies, some scopes, a few trickle in. And I hope that trend just continues because yep. it is, it's what the consumer wants. I can tell you. I mean, so, uh, so anyway, I really yeah. like that. So let's, let's get into, let's start with the, our dislikes or our, the cons, and then we'll get to the, we'll end with the good stuff. But, um, every time we're like, okay, we got to find something. I really only had one negative that I want to point out i i want to point it out because i want to let people know how this actually works so uh, on the unit that i use the 35 640 uh the one that i use more often the the reticle and the range finding box so since you don't know i know you're we're showing some videos so you're getting a chance to kind of see what it looks like but the it's got a reticle and then it's got a little square that is a, a range finding box. That square is what you hold over the target. You push the button and that's what ranges. So if you just hold it over the reticle uh, and push the button, it's not going to range anything. It's got to be, or it will, but it won't be what you're wanting to, to range. It's got to be over the range finding box. My range finding box, and you can see on the video, is touching my, my reticle. So now you might get this scope. And I know Jason's on Jason's the one that he has yep. in his hand. It's in a different pl- it's in a different place. They're not touching. It's in a in a completely different place. But mine and it all has to depend on your zero. So depending on what rifle it is, what your zeroing is, it could be whatever. But my reticle and my range finding box are touching. Not a huge deal. But when I'm shooting, when I'm taking follow up shots and everything's chaotic and frantic, you know, and we got pigs running everywhere. I was getting mixed up. I was, you know, sometimes I was using the range finding box as my reticle and, and it was, uh, it's, it made it a little confusing when they're touching like that. Like I said, you might get this and your range finding box might be low into the left. Somebody else's might be high into the right. It, it, there's no, you know, it, not everyone's going to be exactly the same, but that's what I found with mine. And it was a little bit of a challenge, not a huge negative, but a little bit of a challenge. Okay, I want to I want to talk to that real quick. So yeah, this optic, uh, Z Road, uh, my laser rangefinder uh, little square box is to the left, uh, and a l- not not high, but left and up a little bit of of my center where my my crosshairs are. Again, guys, this that's the way this is going to be if mm-hmm. you're going to have a laser rangefinder box that you can see while you're shooting. Right. There are a couple other brands of laser range finders uh, or a couple other brands of thermal optics that have laser range finders where you're seeing the laser range finding box all the time. And they operate like this, too. They're mm-hmm. they're in different areas depending on where you zero the rifle. If this is going to annoy you, then your only option is to have, I mean, with a laser range finder, your only option is to have a scope like some of the other brands do where the laser range finder is not present when your crosshairs are present. Mm-hmm. You, you have to press the button, the crosshairs disappear. Now you have the laser range finding box. So this is a trade off. And in my opinion, I, I agree that this, you know, I would say that could be a con if it just happens to be there in the bad spot, but it's, it's a, a actually a pro at the same time. Cause I mm-hmm. want to talk about how the fact that the laser range finding box stays on the screen all the time your crosshairs don't go away and another cool thing that some of the other optics don't do is that you can zoom up and still Mm -hmm. range find now there is a caveat to that as well as you zoom in you know it's digital zoom you're zooming in on the center of your screen well that little range finding box if it's sitting over let's just say it's sitting over here to the the left as you zoom in, it's going to do this. And before you know it, it's gone out of the screen. So literally, I'm going to hold my finger here. I, this is what mine does. 
it goes, it actually goes down. So it goes zoom, mm -hmm. zoom, mm -hmm. zoom, and it's out of the screen. I can't see it anymore. And I know there's going to be somebody say, well, I can't see it when I'm zoomed all the way in. Again, <laughs> this is still mm -hmm. way better, in my opinion, than the option of I have to lose my laser rangefinder. I'm sorry, I have to lose my crosshairs to use mm -hmm. my laser rangefinder. So right. you're, you're still getting to zoom and, and do this. Anyway, I think it's a pro and a con. I see right. what you're saying. No doubt about it. Uh, it's, it's give and takes. Uh, this is technology. It's a learning curve. Uh, these manufacturers are getting this stuff better all the time. But I, I do agree there. I'm going to bring up a couple quick things that, mm -hmm. that bothered me just a little. Um, one of these is, is not the fault of AGM. It is the fault of the moron using it. And that moron would be me who does this for a living. <laughs> so I fully expect we're going to get some phone calls about this. Uh, so here it is. Uh, I was out range finding uh, one night. I was, I was testing this thing. And I literally called Hans and I said, Hans, my range finder is, is not working. And he goes, what do you mean? I said, man, I just range it. And I said, it puts up a little red line and I, I'm not, not getting anything. And he was like, well, I haven't had any trouble. I said, man, I don't know. I've been doing this thing for five minutes. And uh, this was this was recently, okay? I'd use this thing enough to know better. Mm -hmm. And anyway, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, you're probably, you know, smarter than me and you already see what it is. But I was out there in the dark and uh, I had my lens cap flipped up right in front of my range finder. And, and I, I don't know how I reached up here to do something and I felt it and it hit me and I went, you got to be kidding. I flipped that thing around, hit the button. I'm like, uh, moron alert. It's me. It's, it's operator error as it usually is. And so, it, again, I'm glad this thing rotates because you may want to rotate it left. You may want to rotate it right. You may not use the laser range finder and you may want to go up with it. That's fine. Uh, I just wanted to say it, it's something you need to be careful of. And then the only other thing, and this is getting really nitpicky, but I, I do have a little bit of a, a of a complaint here, and I don't know any way to fix it. I mean, if I if I was designing it, I don't have a better idea. But what it is, this little tether, it's a little hard rubber plastic, or I shouldn't say hard, but firm rubber plastic tether that is goes to the scope and then attaches to this um, battery cap so you don't lose it. Um, it looks like something, you know, eventually you might end up breaking. I don't know if you, you know, catch it, snag it, rip it. It's pretty tough though, but I mean, you could, but it makes it a little hard to unscrew. I'm going to try to show this. So when you tr start trying to unscrew it, this thing, you know, it, it twists around with it and it hangs. And I, so I kind of end up having to put my finger there. Guys, this is minor. I know it. This is literally <laughs> nitpicking their battery cap to death. And in reality, if they didn't have this, I would complain because oh, yeah. I would say, hey, I can lose my battery cap. So, it, it, again, it's so, so minor. And yeah. I would rather fight that a little bit. The, you know, one time a night you might change your battery versus losing your battery cap, dropping it out there in the field. So anyway, and look, you see me doing it. It's no problem. I'm twisting it on. I'm not doing anything. Just like that, anyway. Jason crashes the economy with his negative exactly. comments about this varmint. So exactly. No. So no. So now let's talk about some positives. Yeah, I've got. Uh, I've got it right here. Let me. I'll start out. I'll, well, I'll I'm the one in your bash. That you ought to let me say something nice. You know. I mean, I'll let you. Say, no. Uh, so I, I, go ahead. As far as the pros, there's a lot. There's a laundry list of them. Uh, obviously, ADM mount. Uh, the mm -hmm. picture quality on it's very good, very sharp, crisp, clear picture image was was like I said before, I was it exceeded my expectation with the picture quality. Um, we've talked about it also before. 18650, 18650 mm -hmm. battery, a huge positive. The laser rangefinder, uh, y'all, is accurate, uh, and they mm -hmm. say accurate up to a six hundred yards. I definitely, after testing it, I would agree with that, but. Uh, you know, very, very important, the, the accuracy of the laser range finder, especially as a tool that many of you are looking for or needing that, that it is functional, functionally sound. Um, everything about it, other than the, the things that we discuss, I think are, are great. I think the design, I think a very small, compact, uh, I mean, I don't know. What well, do you think? Thank you. Thank, thank you for I just literally marking off as you talk and everything. On your well, that's list what you get mine. for the, the, saying that yeah. a negative is the battery cap tether. That's what you get. 
<laughs> the tether for the battery cap. Hey, it's, hey, I'm telling you, <laughs> our job on this show is to find nitpicking yeah. things or, or glaring if they're yeah. there and we're looking for them. So I would say one more thing that's a positive that you didn't mention um, is it has the same uh, firmware menu system that the, the Rattlers and the, the Taipan monoculars and their other units do. And that's a good thing because it's simple. Yeah. It's easy to yeah. use. Uh, it right. is not hard. It's, it's one thing. Uh, their, their manual, uh, the manual that comes with these is nice. They, they print a real manual uh, that you can open up. And one thing that AGM is good about is they show you the symbol in their manual and then tell you what that symbol means. Because that's something that is confusing. You turn it on, you get to the menu, you're like, I, I don't know what mm. that means. I don't know what it is. It's like, off or on. Well, I don't know what the symbol is. Do I want it? But, but they're really good about the giving right. you that list. And, and so we don't get calls often about setup issues no. with AGM optics right. because the manual's good. They're simple to use. I really like it. Uh, my opinion on this optic uh, between the two and the two and a half power. So if you're doing a lot of long range shooting, I mean, if you're hunting coyotes and you're really, you know, shooting out there a lot uh, in that, you know, 175, 200 plus yard range, uh, I think I'd go ahead and spring for the extra $500. I'd get the mm -hmm. two and a half power. I think mm -hmm. it's going to do you well. Um, if you're doing, uh, you know, most of your stuff is under 200 yards. Uh, if you're uh, maybe doing everything under say a hundred, or if you're doing some haul cutting as well, I really like the two power. I like mm -hmm. the field of view. I think value for the dollar. I think that the two power, the, the 35 millimeter is it, it's it, again, I'm mostly a hog hunter. Uh, so I really I gravitate to the wider field of view, the lower magnification. I really like the two power, mm -hmm. but I know Hans does a lot of coyote hunting mm -hmm. and he's been using the two power. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think it will, you know, I think those are the two differences there. I think these scopes will work for both coyote and hog hunters uh, because of uh, where the magnifications lie and the, you know, being 640, being able to zoom up uh, if you need to. Uh, I think uh, overall, my thoughts, very, very good optics. Uh, again, all the things Han said, I'm not going to go back down the list. We've said it multiple times. Uh, all those things, mm -hmm. uh, as well as the ease of use. Um, I do think, like I said, the 35 millimeter is a really good value for the dollar. Um, all those things, I, I love it. And, and one thing I'm going to comment, because you, you, you talked about the, the accuracy of the laser rangefinder. The laser rangefinder is super simple. And it works really well. And what I mean by that is it's it's almost instant. I mean, you mm -hmm. press the button, yeah. boom, you've got the yardage there. And I've found that, I don't know exactly what it is. I mean, maybe some are a little finickier. I mean, other brands or what. But sometimes I feel like, man, maybe the, the laser rangefinder isn't, that box isn't perfectly zeroed. Sometimes I'm like, man, I got to move a little bit. Yeah. Every time that I, I hit what I was trying to hit an animal or an object, it gave me the yardage and guys, I'm using this most of the time on my own property where I know the yardages. So it's really not me. It's me testing the unit is what I'm doing. Cause I know how far that tree or if that animal's standing there by that brush pile or that fence, I know how far things are. Like Han said, very accurate, very quick. Um, I think it does exactly what it's supposed to do. Uh, mm -hmm. it's the varmints are a win in my book and I cannot yep. wait to review the 384 units because now we're talking about some real value for the dollar for guys that, um, you know, aren't looking to spend, you know, five, $6,000. Right. They want that, you know, more affordable 33 to $3,800, but they need magnification mm -hmm. and they need a laser range finder. You know, again, we said those units are three and four power. Guys, that's going to be a big review, going to be huge sellers on yep. those scopes as well. So stay tuned for that. Yep. So if you are interested in purchasing the AGM varmints, the 640s, the 384, any AGM product or any night vision or thermal optic, uh, optic give us a call 877-350-1818. Uh, you can find all this stuff on the website, outdoorlegacygear.com. Uh, you can talk to me or Jason directly if you have any questions about uh, helping, needing help with purchasing decisions. Please give us a call. We'd love to help you. Or 
Find it online, OutdoorLegacyGear.com. You can find Jason on all the socials at Outdoor Legacy on Facebook, on Instagram. You can find him over at YouTube. Uh, you can find all of our past episodes, all 210 previous episodes on the late night vision show.com. And you can find me over on Instagram at Hans ETX, H A N S E T X, or on YouTube, Hans East Texas. Uh, thank you all for joining us this week. All right, folks, this was episode number 211. Uh, good Lord willing, Creek Don't Rise. We will be back next week uh, for 212. We have got another review planned. Uh, so stick around. We hope to see y'all then. Between now and then, Y'all stay safe in the fields and keep making those bacon pancakes.